before, I find them a little bit hard to control. Sometimes with pigments, you, you put something somewhere and you think it's looking good, and all of a sudden, when it dries, it doesn't quite match what you wanted it to look like. Nos va a intentar explicar su forma de proceder a la hora de hacer embarrados y empolvados. Eh, vais a ver que va a usar principalmente pinturas. Él ha descubierto con el paso del tiempo que los pigmentos no son tan fiables porque eh, muchas veces no sabes qué va a pasar cuando seca, tanto temas de densidad como también color. Y entonces su forma de trabajar es principalmente con pinturas y técnicas que nos va a mostrar ahora. Vale. Ok. Yeah, so, yeah, so what we're going to try and do today is, first of all, replicate the look as something where it's almost like a dried mud. You know, mud's been dust and mud's dried off and it's starting to leave like a flat uh, patina on the sides or the tops of the mud. Vamos a empezar con una muestra de barro seco. Es ya una patina seca, como en el caso... Yeah, which is very much... ...parecido a esto. Can you see that okay? En la pantalla podéis ver la, yeah. la imagen. ¿Puedes decir que está bien? Sí, esto es oscuro. Esto es como... No voy a mostrar eso, pero... Como puedes ver cómo está sellado en la parte del vehículo. Es uno de los baldones que veis que está... Es barro seco. Ok, así que lo que vamos a empezar con es... Primero de todo, añadir el mud. Ahora, lo que hago para añadir el mud es que uso... Putty. And I normally use the putty before the model's had any paint on it. So when I finish the model, before I paint it, I'll apply the mud using this, this putty. Tamiya putty or squadron signal putty. This, this, this is what works probably best for me. Um, you could use other putties, but this is what, this is what I use. I don't, I don't dilute it. Just take it out of the tube. Even before you're applying the primer? Yep, yep. before primer and anything. Translate. Yeah. Eh, su sistema consiste en usar cuti, tamilla o escuadrón y lo que hace es incluso antes de imprimir define las áreas en las que va a aplicar el, el, el barro. Um, I've painted this now, but I'll show you. Normally this would have been already had the mud applied. So take your take your cuti on your actual spatula and just apply it to the model. Now, the beauty of this technique is you can actually apply the mud exactly where you want it to be. Eh, la ventaja que es muy controlable. Aplicas el puti exactamente donde quieres. So there, if, if I want lots of mud up here, I can add it here. If I want just a little bit of mud, I can put it here. With, with pigments, you're never quite sure where it's going to go. Con pigmentos es más difícil de saber dónde se va a concentrar. En el punto es el volumen. Yeah, yeah, and you can also, as David just said there, if you want a bit more volume, what you're doing is you're actually laying down the foundation of where you want your wood to be. And if you want to have it a little bit thicker, once that's dried, you can just go back over the top. Podéis decidir la cantidad de volumen de barrio que queréis que queréis hacer. Es tan fácil como seguir aplicando más capas o aplicar una capa un poco más resto más hermosa desde el principio. Right, so now we have our, our mud where we want it to be on the side of the model. Tenemos el barro donde lo queríamos. And the next thing is, is literally what we want to do is try and create where the, the dust and the mud is dried and a certain amount of the dust has fallen off, leaving the kind of traces. But not just, um, oh, I swear to put it, not like a cloudy pattern, as if the, the dust and mud has had some body to it as it's fallen away from the, from the vehicle. The next step is to try to reproduce the way the barro starts to fall, starts to create like a patina, but not in a form like if it were nubes, but in a form more coherent, more vertical. That's what we're going to try to create, and we're using now the chipping fluid, right? The liquid 
este que se usa tipo laca que os permite hacer eh, desconchones. Yeah. The hairspray technique. Does anybody use it on the wall? Podéis usar laca o podéis usar los productos ya, ya preparados. This is like a variation of that. So we have the chip and fluid in the hairbrush. We'll just apply it to the bottle. You're better off, you're better at being thin, and then you can apply two or three coats and it being really thick and you can't um, thin it down anymore. So just start off with a really thin coat. If you can see um, there, can you see how when I brush it? Intentar encontrar, no me dice una proporción exacta en término porcentual, pero intentar encontrar un poquito más fino, eh, más diluido que el, de la leche, que la consistencia de, de la leche. Uh, 60, 40, 60, 60, 40, 60, 40, 60, 40, 60, 40, 60, 40, 60, 40, 60, 40, 60, 40, suave, muy... no hagáis grandes concentraciones en un solo punto, siempre moviendo el
always helps to mix enough for what you need. Que siempre intentéis mezclar desde el principio la cantidad que necesitéis porque si no tenéis que hacerlo dos veces. similar to what you would do if you were doing hairspray uh, whitewash. So that, that's what's very similar to what at this point in time. And then what we'll start to do is put this to one side. We'll start to remove the paint exactly as we use as you would do doing a hairspray technique. se elimina la, la laca, se empapa la, la zona que, en la que vas a empezar a hacer los desconchones o la eliminación del producto. And what you want is, whereas with where you're doing a whitewash, you kind of you would go around detail and just like sort of stab it. With this, you want to go in downward strokes as if as if the wood. <laughs> so it's the mud falling down off the model or starting to come down from the model. Se trata de con el pincel y la fila haciendo como una máquina con caídas. See there how it's starting to come down as if it's um, not as much on the top as it's coming down towards the bottom for your, for your actual mud effects. Se trata de limpiar la parte de dejar menos empolvada la parte superior e ir concentrando hacia abajo, dejar cada vez más producto según vas avanzando hacia abajo. Then you can leave dust almost in the edges or as if we're it's been worn off the edges, but got trapped in some of the little um, crevices. Y también dejar siempre polvo en las zonas, digamos, en las hendiduras, en las calderas, que es donde se suele acumular el, el polvo. Do you see this this area here where you would get the, the dust would naturally trap in the mud, so you can keep that, and that that will come in to into it later on when we're going to try and do more effects to actually show where the wet effects and the damps kind of come through. Con esas partes él va a seguir jugando luego, aplicando eh, tonos más húmedos y seguramente lavados, no ha dicho eso exactamente, pero seguramente aplicará otro tipo de técnicas. Pero la idea es que digamos en zonas eh, con, con, con profundidad dejar siempre la, el, el polvo o el barro. Y lo que notice as well 
is I actually can move some of the paint that I've removed. I'm actually moving it around the model and I'm leaving it so it almost bleaches the colour because when things get muddy, when things get dusty, it almost bleaches the colour out of the base camouflage. So by just moving the paintbrush around, leaving the paint in some, some areas and then just by blocking it, Can you see how you still got that, that dust that's kind of laid across there? Lo que hace es con parte de la pintura que está quitando, eh, hace como, como cuando hacemos con óleos que hacemos como pequeñas nubecitas, pues eh, muy parecido con, con la pintura acrílica. Y de esa forma lo que hace es, eh, bleachy significa bleach es lejía, crea como un efecto de desgastado natural, un poco por el tema del sol y de, de polvo, eh, sobre la pintura base. And can everybody see as well the mud that we applied earlier with the putty? Can you see how that now looks like? Veis la zona de abajo mud? con el con el putty, con volumen. And if you want to add some further effects, as if it's been scratched, as it's gone through underbrush. Y con un palillo o con un objeto fino punzante podéis crear eh, formas y arañazos. You can see how we have your scratch marks as if things have been it's caught. Un, un rayon. It's all it's it's all adding little points of interest that you can pick up later on when you when you apply more effects. Se trata de crear pequeños puntos eh, interesantes, puntos de atención donde luego le vais a dar más más profundidad con otro tipo de efectos. Pero en esta primera parte es importante ya empezar a definir áreas de carácter de vuestro de vuestra maqueta. And what you can do is you can work that as much as you want. You, if you think it's not enough there, you can reapply it and do it again, or if you want to take more off. But with this initial dust stage, what I would recommend is where you see where your mud is here, leave quite a bit, quite a bit of dried mud above your wet mud area, because what you'll find is when you start to add your wet mud effects, the dry mud will start to disappear. So you, you want a, quite a large zone to work with. Um, la, la, podéis usar, podéis hacer esto tantas veces como veáis necesario para, para vuestra maqueta. Lo que él os recomienda es que la parte de barro seco, que está siempre en la parte inferior, dejéis cierta holgura, porque en cuanto os pongáis a trabajar con un barro más humedecido y al usar ese tipo de productos que os van a permitir conseguir esos acabados, va a ir comiéndose un poco la parte de barro seco. Si lo vais muy justo, si dejáis muy poquito barro seco, cuando apliquéis el barro húmedo va a reducirlo todavía más. Entonces es mejor dejar un poquito más seco que luego siempre lo podéis convertir a uno. ¿Vale? A un Everybody okay so far? That's one there, as you can see. I've, I've added the putty today, but what I've done is I've done a little bit more work on this one while I was at, at, at my, in my, my home. But you can see the effects pretty quick and, and very similar. Esa, ese faldón que veis, él lo ha trabajado previo a la demo para, para que podáis ver eh, cómo con distintas fases, por así decirlo, él ha hecho una previa y ahora mismo ha aplicado el, el puti para seguir eh, dando, dando sucesivas capas y sucesivos efectos. Okay. Then what we'll do now is, what we'll start to do is block in the areas of dark and mud. So what we're doing now, if we've got our light areas of mud, what I'm going to do is go to the other extreme and block in the areas that's going to be the really dark, damp mud areas on the side skirt. And what we do with that is we just take some normal acrylic paint, black, um, dark brown. Lo que va a hacer ahora es definir las zonas en las que va a usar un barro muy oscuro, un barro... It's actually fresh mud, right? We need yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Entonces va a definir, usando estos colores acrílicos, las zonas donde va el barro recién eh, adquirido por el, por el vehículo. Yeah, and what, what we'll do is we'll just basically take a bit of our original color, the medium gray. Empieza con el color base, que ha usado para, para el empolvado. Take some of the brown, chocolate brown, you can use a dark brown, you know, what you're doing is you're just actually mixing up 
a, a dark brown colour. It, it doesn't have to be anything specific as long as it's, it's quite dark at this point in time. So, que no os preocupéis por la referencia exacta. Uh, mientras que sea un color de oscuro, marrón oscuro, pues eh, vosotros, cada uno tiene sus gustos y puede decidir cuál le cuál parece más bien. Even to the point of it being darker than light, so it needs to be darker um, as opposed to a light tone. So, now we see how dark that tone is there. And then, what we, all we're doing now is where we've actually put our putty, we now have an area where we know that we can build. Our, that's where our mud's going to be. So it's all about having a controlled kind of technique as to what you're trying to do. And it's just literally. Se va a centrar en las partes donde estaba el, el puti y dentro de esa parte es donde creará esta zona de, de barro fresco, de barro más oscuro. And when we're blocking this in, it doesn't have to be particularly neat. No as, long as, super precisos. as long as you're following where your, your mud build-up from your putty is. Simplemente seguir esa máxima que es aplicarlo por donde está el, el putty. And even even with a little bit of a kind of <coughs> like a feathered edge, where you, where you feather the edge of, of what you're doing. Run that in that channel where you still have some damp, damp effects still in the uh, the recesses and the, the, the joints of the armor plates. También so aplica un poco la zona donde donde hemos hablado antes que siempre las hendiduras pues tiene se acumula el, el polvo y el barro. And even if you want it to go darker, okay. just take just some black. Queréis hacer incluso un poco más oscuro. And get even a, a deeper effect. So you're actually going almost like a layering effect. As everybody can see, it's, it's quite a quick, you know, you are working quite quickly. Es una técnica que se aplica muy, muy rápido. Needs to be, you, can, you can even add different tones, you can mix your tones together, a slightly lighter tone, a slightly darker tone. Podéis jugar con diferentes tonalidades, no tiene por qué ser homogénea, podéis eh, aplicar pequeñas variaciones para que tenga pues, mayor amplitud cromática. So. Remember when I said earlier about leaving quite a difference in height between your, your dry effects and your wet effects? This gives you this scope area here where you can actually add a lot more detail and, and things that can become more interesting. Está intentando explicar que, como había comentado antes, dejar una barrera importante entre la parte más clara y la parte más oscura. Como podéis ver, deja bastante, bastante espacio. And as you can see, at this point in time, this area here, 
it's quite stark. It doesn't it doesn't look very natural at this point in time. It looks it looks like we have just painted it with a paintbrush. But we can make that look a little bit more natural now. Um, Entonces por ahora no parece, no luce tremendamente natural. Lo que va a hacer es some really tight knit sponge, quite tight uh, bubble sponge. This is a um, an automotive finishing pad. You can get them from any automotive body shops. Very very good. One you can sand your models with it, but also the sponge is very very dense, so you can get really really fine effects with with the sponge. What we can do is just apply it. Básicamente va a usar técnica de esponja, pero en concreto con este tipo de de esponja que consigue un un acabado muy realista. Going along the edge of what we've just done. Y a través de los bordes, lo que acaba de, de pintar. ¿Te puedes preguntar si después del color base realiza el modelo y si no, cuántas horas lo deja secar? When you apply the base coat, yeah. do you varnish? And if you do, how many hours you, you leave it? Are you, yeah, when, after I finish my base, what I do is I do my base coat and then I apply a satin varnish. Um, an acrylic satin varnish leave for 24 hours and then after that no more varnish everything after that is just effects ya va después de hacer color base aplica un barniz satinado acrílico y lo deja secar durante 24 horas y a partir de ahí se acabó el varnish and i think by can you see now by sponging the effect on the edge of this the wet area can you see now we broke it up and made it look a lot more natural? Con este, con esta, digamos, técnica de aplicar el mismo color oscuro con la esponja, pues la integración entre las dos áreas es más natural y se ve más realista. But the putty is actually telling us now. You can see by adding that putty already, we've got a, a build-up of um, heavy-duty mud effects here already. So this is actually guiding where the, the weathering and everything is is following to. El putty es una vía. Os dice dónde está la parte más, eh, por así decirlo, más eh, embarrada y donde tiene sentido aplicar las partes oscuras que, que está aplicando. Right. So now. What we got is we have our dried mud effects, we have our wet mud, heavy mud buildup, which still looks quite flat. You, you've got a light tone and a dark tone, so it's quite a lot of contrast now. What we're going to try and do now is blend the two together so you get rid of this sort of um, high contrast and you give the impression where as, as mud dries you have a dry bit, a dry area, a slightly damp area and a lot darker areas. This is what we're going to try and do, this is what we're going to do now. So, ahora mismo ha decidido, digamos, los dos extremos, la parte más clara y la parte más oscura. Eh, ahora lo que va a intentar hacer es la parte intermedia, integrar estas dos áreas y que, y que ah, vamos a ver la expresión de que está un poco flat, está un poco plano, ¿no? que son dos áreas como muy and to do this, what, what, we, what I normally use is now I start to use enamels. Because we've... Up until now we've worked in acrylics. So what I don't want to do is I don't want to wash the acrylic what I've already used off. Because you can use enamels relatively quickly straight away onto the, 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 the model, you can get a nice definition between the two areas. And this, this is very good for blending the two areas together. Entonces él piensa que con esmaltes es una forma, es la mejor forma de, de hacer el, el, la, la integración de las dos áreas. Earth effects, yeah. Any, any, any sort of mud tones will do. It's, it's a lot of it's down to your own preference. What, you, what you think would work best for you. It's every, I think it's always good to have a, an idea in your mind of how you want the model to look. 
sometimes instead of just going ahead and just weathering and weathering and see where it goes, it's always a good idea to have a picture in your mind of what you want it to look like, even to the point of having some reference pictures around you, just to you know, keep an eye on things, so yes, that, that's what I'm trying to achieve. And this is where you, um, you see lots of modellers taking pictures of diggers and excavators and everybody looks at you like you're a bit strange. <laughs> Le, lo que dice es que puedes usar no necesariamente este, podrías usar otro. La parte principal, lo que él aconseja es que tengamos una idea más o menos clara, definida de qué es lo que queremos conseguir. También la parte de contar con fotografía o con documentación que te permita intentar aproximar. Porque al final si no, bueno, pues podríamos estar usando colores hasta el infinito, pero se trata un poco de saber qué nos gusta, qué queremos obtener, intentar usar las tonalidades que nos lleven a, a, ese, a ese punto. Pero no hay que ser muy muy estricto con exactamente seguir ese color en especial. Y you can see by what I've done now, I'm actually just slightly blending away where I put the enamel. And you see how now we've got we've got our dry tone, our almost Met, um, mid tone might start to dry out, and then our heavy duty, um, really dark mud tones. And again, this is this is the kind of effects where you can keep keep switching back and forth between it. If you think something's got a little bit too much, or you need a little bit too much, or a little bit more, you can just add a bit more. Es mm, de la misma forma que con acrílico se podía ir adelante y atrás. Si crees que te has quedado corto, te has quedado largo, pues lo mismo aquí, incluso con más flexibilidad porque se puede quitar con el, usando el, el, el filo. Entonces ahora le está añadiendo un pelín más en un par de zonas. Deja secar un pelín y luego lo va, le va dando pasadas para que quede perfectamente integrado. We're doing this, um quite quickly because it's a demonstration where normally I would take two or three hours just um, adding a little bit, taking a bit off, adding a bit more, playing, moving the paint round. So it, it's not it's not a race, it's just we do, we're doing this quick so you can see a result quickly well in the time of the demonstration time, that's all. Como veis está yendo muy deprisa, esto no es lo normal. Eh, algo como esto a lo mejor le podría llevar dos tres horas en casa. Es una demo y está intentando explicar de forma rápida todo lo que al final acaba haciendo. ¿vale? And we can see in a short space of time the difference between. Can you see how now we have the, 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 the tones starting to blend together? Podéis ver que entre uno y otro hay la zona intermedia que ha creado con el esmalte la que va difuminando y, y, el, y, el, y el, la apariencia es mucho más natural y, y más realista. But if you still think, hmm, I've, kind of, I've lost a little bit of the wet, the dark mud effects that I, that I had earlier, you can just go back to your acrylic. Y si por algún motivo crees que te has cargado una parte importante o que querías quedarte no tan corto de, de la parte oscura, del barro fresco, pues siempre estás a tiempo de volver a jugar con, con la mezcla que has creado. En almost in a stabbing motion, you can, you can bring that effect back to where, if you want a little bit more of the dark wood effect, you can, you can do it. And that's, that's what I'm saying, it's a matter of switching between the two. If you didn't want to have any mud on your model at all, because sometimes you have a model that can have dust and wet dust, but not heavy duty mud. Basically, you can do the same technique, but you've not added the putty. Can you see this area here where we have that? What I can do now is I can literally go back and just go back to my my the enamel. No en todos los modelos vais a tener un barro tan consistente. Al final hay modelos en los que hay envolvados más, más ligeros y es fresco y, es, y está seco, ¿vale? Entonces, la parte derecha veis que se la ha dejado sin poner puti. Cuando no queráis mucho a concentración de barro, no pongáis puti, pero sin embargo sí podéis usar el mismo sistema, la misma técnica de integrar las dos partes con, con el esmalte. And then all I've done is I've just applied the, the enamel, enamel here, and I'll just... Sometimes it's best to leave this to dry a little bit, but because of the, again, because of the, the time we have, I'll, I'll try and do it. Yes, dejarlo secar un poco, pero como aquí vamos días de tiempo, pues lo va a hacer rápido. 
and what we're getting now is you can see where you almost have that the, the damp the damp dust or damp mud on the bottom half almost like where it's still wet. La parte de abajo ahora se trata de crear un, un barro humedecido. Mucho polvo, no barro. Polvo humedecido. Always try to bring things down in a downward stroke because gravity naturally wants things to move down. So that's always what we're going to do it, to think about that side of things. And you can see there how now we actually have almost like your dry dust and then your slightly wetter dust here. If you want, again, you can go back to your... Intentar siempre de, de arriba abajo, que es un poco la trayectoria que de forma natural sigue el, el polvo cuando, cuando lo tapa. Back to the acrylic. And if you want to even add some little marks in the acrylic. And also where you have like a joint in the armor plates, moisture will always track up those joints. And these are always a good area where you can add a little bit more interest or visual interest for the eye. Para conseguir mayor interés visual, mayor riqueza visual, siempre las hendiduras en las partes profundas dan siempre un, una capita para que se vea un tono más oscurecido y cierto contraste también. And if you also notice, we almost getting um, what we call in the UK tide marks, where you almost get like a line where the, where the moisture is being. And you want to keep that because as the mud dry, the dust dries out, you'd get that naturally occurring, so it's actually, again, it's another um, little visual piece of interest. So you, what you're trying to do is add little things that makes it look more interesting to the eye, instead of it just being uniform. You're trying, you're trying to recreate something that's um, really quite chaotic, but in a, in a controlled manner, if, you, if everybody follows what I'm trying to say. How do you do that? How you do that line where it's like it naturally comes? It just does it naturally as, as, it, as the enamel dries out. It leaves a tide mark because you put the enamel, you put, you've got enamel, then I put the acrylic over enamel, and it does leave like a tide mark so you can actually see where it's been. Algunas veces, eh, usando esmaltes, deja, deja un cerco. Lo que él dice es que usando el, el acrílico sobre ese cerco, de hecho, puedes llegar a crear una forma aprovecharte de ese cerco y crear un, una línea, una marca que en muchos en modelos reales se ve. ¿vale? Entonces, la, lo que comentaba es, es una parte muy caótica porque al final el barro y el polvo siguen unos patrones eh, aleatorios, pero intentar poner un poco de control y de, 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 de aplicar las, las técnicas. Yeah, that, that mark I was talking about is. Can everybody see that mark there on the camera? Veis esa marca que ha dejado ahí el esmalte. So you almost get that way where, where it starts to dry and it's kind of pulling away. So when you get this wet area above the dry, uh, the dry area um, above the darker wet areas. And again, it's just a matter of going back and blending between. Find a bit more enamel. Si veis que se os queda una parte húmeda por encima, que por el motivo que sea, no seca, pues siempre podéis añadir y si no os gusta, pues lo, lo fundís. Going back to mi acrylic now. So I want a little bit more darker effect. Va a volver a usar acrílicos para insistir en los efectos más oscuros. And we'll just blend that out. Everybody.
already see that. Does it all make does it all make sense to everybody so far? What, what we're trying to, to show, yeah. Se parece que tiene sentido, o sea, es útil. So, what we've done is we've got our we've got our kind of blended effects and our wet effects. I'll come back to this one here because this one's slightly different. And what we want to try and do now is if you want to add a little bit more texture to the mud. The mud looks a little bit dead, there's, there's no organicness to it. You know, the mud looks kind of, it, it comprises of bits of leaves, bits of grass, quite an organic look to it. So what we need to do now is add something that's going to give us that kind of organic look. Now, you can use pigments. Yeah. We've got... Hasta ahora veis que el, el, el barro, bueno, pues... Eh, no tiene esa apariencia orgánica que suele tener, en el que hay tierra, piedra, incluso hierba, etc. Entonces lo que va a intentar ahora es dar un toque más natural, más que lo define como orgánico, usando pigmentos. Y podemos usar varios tonos de pigment ahora, pero también, porque ya hemos puesto las áreas where we're going to have the wet mud with the plaster, we don't need to apply as much pigment and we know exactly where we need to put it. So it, you know, it takes away a lot of the randomness from it. Lo que la ventaja que tiene el haber eh, aplicado el putty previamente es que ya no tenemos que poner tanto pigmento y esa parte aleatoria de a dónde me va a secar o dónde se me va a concentrar el pigmento la eliminamos porque vamos directamente a la parte que tiene que tiene putty. So again. Yeah. Dark, dark colored pigment. A bit, bit brown pigment in there just for a bit of variation. Está mezclando los dos tonos. But if we just use pigment alone, that's not got really an organic look. Pigment's got body, but there's no not really organic to it. Los pigmentos tienen cuerpo, pero no que está mezcla. So, so yeah. what you do is you find something that is organic. Normal tea bag. Es una normal tea bag. Take some of the tea leaves. Now you can you can sieve it if you want to make them finer. But mix that in with the acrylic, with the uh, pigments. Your, your TF5, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Englishman for tea, Englishman for tea. It's always time for tea in England. And then we just take our acrylic, acrylic again, burnt umber, um, very much the same mix we've had, black and some of the browns and, and colours we've already used. Is there any sort of uh, degradation or there something organic like tea? No, no, because if, if you use tea as it is now, to make the tea um, not rot, it's freeze dried. So this is, it would rot this kind of thing. And, and you're actually encasing it in paint, so the paint actually um, prevents any further degradation. And I, I've used it for about seven or eight years now, and I've not had any problems, so I can't Con see it. The está está seco, entonces en principio no se pudre con el con el paso del tiempo. Entonces él comenta que lo ha usado entre siete ocho años y nunca ha tenido problemas de de que se deteriore el, el producto. And you can make this really as thick as you want it. So if you want more body to it, just add a little bit more tea. Cuanto más cuerpo le queráis dar, más te le añadís. Also, what you can do, which, which we haven't got here today, is add some white wood glue. And the white wood glue... Uh, white wood glue is... Yeah. Uh, sí, cola, cola blanca también. And that will actually help bind everything together. So it will dry solid. 
but it won't affect the actual um, texture of, of the mix we've just made. Compacta, but maintains the la, la texture that we're conseguiendo now. And then all we can do is we just take, take our mix. it on where, where, where the actual initial area is you put your actual putty so you don't have to cover anything you're just augmenting or adding to where you've already been se trata simplemente de completar la parte donde donde está el putty Building up your actual textures. Veis que tiene mucha más textura. mud that started to flake off, we've got the mid tone where it's starting to dry out and we've also got the heavy wet areas along the bottom of the skirt. This is probably a little bit exaggerated to, to show for an example of this demonstration. But what we want to do now is try and blend the two together. We still It still looks a little bit stark and we still need to kind of get it to sort of look separate but not that separate that it doesn't look harmonious. So next thing is Entonces ahora tenemos tres zonas, una zona seca, una zona húmeda y una intermedia de fundición, pero lo que va a intentar es integrarlas todavía más porque se ve un poco exagerado, como demasiado marcada, está marcado. Take a brush. In our mix we've already made with a bit of pigment in there. Entonces, con la mezcla de pigmento y acrílico. And just by flicking off the cocktail stick Yeah, we're splashing in and what we, we go close up to the line of where we've already been and just by that we can blend everything in together.
because we have the texture, it actually does add a little bit more to the mud texture with the pigment being in the actual mix. Pigmento enriquece la, la textura que hay, que hay previamente. There we can see. You see how by doing the splatter effect you kind of mixed, you blended the two together. And again, if, if you don't want to go that far, if we go back to this one here where we did earlier, where we just have just the small wet effects, but not too heavy a mud effect. Just go back to have a dark mud mix. This time you can either choose to use the one with the pigment or without the pigment, it's, it's entirely up to you. And the same applies where we just go. Ahora va a hacer lo mismo, pero en la, en la parte donde no aplicó tanta textura, donde no había putty, entonces acude a la mezcla original en la que no había pigmento. Y también podríais usar la pigmentada, vamos a llamarle, si queréis justo en ese momento darle un poquito más de, de textura. splattered effect but without the, the body of heavy duty mud application so you get almost like it's just where it's just mud that's splashed up off the road or something. Si conseguís unos como salpicaduras mucho más ligeras no sin tanta textura. What I'll do is while I've, while I've got the paint there I'll just blend I'll blend a little bit of this more in here just to just to show you how the technique works a bit more. If you think it's too much, large flat brush, moisten with water, always dry it down in a downward stroke. Si creéis que os habéis pasado con, con las salpicaduras, con un, con un pincel plano, and you'll see agua y pasadas de arriba hacia abajo. And you see how that actually dissipates the, the effect we just put on. Quite big splashes there, just go down. And blend them out. If you think, right, I'm sort of getting there where I want, but you need to have a little bit of wet effects now. Next sim simple situation is some gloss varnish. Va a intentar ahora dar unos efectos de, de mayor humedad. Let's just straight out of the top. Oops. 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 El, el barniz, yeah. Gloss, just gloss varnish. Yeah. Gloss varnish. Any gloss, any gloss varnish will do. Be in acrylic or enamel. With a little, quite small stubby brush. Just track it into the areas, and again, where, where you've already got your mud effect, this allows you to put it where you need it to be. Puede ser tanto acrílico como laca, y veis que lo va definiendo algunos puntos dentro de las de las partes oscuras que ha que ha marcado previamente. Eso es para el barro más reciente. 
so that guy is a big guy that And then again, you can just... Just blend the edges in, almost just like a little, like a stippling effect. So I can feel it all being clear, it does there, and I'm going to have to do a little bit of a fundido. If you really want to, we can go back to our um, speckling effect. I mean, after long enough, more is hard to go. And just apply it directly, so you get the gear, the mud splashing up. If you think it's a bit too much, just with a normal brush, and just bring it down and it blends everything in. So that's quite quickly how I do heavy duty mud. Not, normally that process would take a lot longer. You know, it, it, we, we've had to cut it quite short to fit everything in for the time that we have. But that, that's, that's the general technique and what everybody can do is play with it themselves and whatever they find is easier or what works for them, you know, try different tones, different um, thicknesses of um, pigments, different thicknesses of organic material to see how that actually works, whether that makes it a lot heavier or darker or lighter or whatever effects you want to do. Even to the point is, if you want this to be um, a little bit lighter, you can even go back Ha explicado de una forma muy rápida, muy resumida, en un tiempo muy concentrado, un poco todas las técnicas que al final él aplica para, para conseguir esto. Yeah, eh, al that. final se trata de también tener una idea a vosotros de cuán eh, terroso lo queréis, cuán fresco y en función de qué acabado queréis eh, conseguir para vuestra maqueta, pues combinar las técnicas que ha, que ha mencionado. It's okay. A partir de ahí no vuelve a usar, no vuelve a usar barniz. Realmente el efecto humedad es para definir la zona más reciente de barro. Si es así, me, if the if the gloss, if if at the end of the day all these techniques, the gloss, when you're getting the the wet mark, no barniz because if you barniz later, then you yes, no, no. You just mentioned the genius barniz at the beginning. Yeah, they only varnish once. I put my base colour on, I put a satin varnish on, and after that I don't varnish at all because varnish, if you varnish at the end, it kills everything. Everything is the same tone. You want different kind of sheens and tones in your models as much as possible. When you make maquetas with this look terroso and with barro, you only do a varnizado después de capa base. Y evita volver a barnizar porque lo que haría es homogeneizar y dejarte de, de una sola, totalmente homogeneizar, básicamente matar todos los efectos que has intentado ir consiguiendo y, y diferenciar las distintas partes de la maqueta. What I've done is I've just got some of the lighter color that we use first for doing the actual dried on dust effect. And what I'm going to do is just show you, if you want to add a little bit more interest, you can use this again with the splattering technique. Just go back, back to where you've been. It's a lot of the original, the part with which he did the barro seco, and he's making the splashes, the splashes, the splashes, to add a little more variety. And you see how that will start to blend and bring back some of it. If you've lost any of the tone previously in the weathering effects, que te arriesgas cuando estás haciendo la parte oscura, te arriesgas a haber oscurecido mucho la parte seca. Entonces, bueno, al final es un poco ir hacia adelante y hacia atrás, hacia adelante y hacia atrás hasta que consigues lo que, lo que te gusta. Just by doing this, we'll start to bring them back. And if it's a little bit too much, a bit of water, si, ha, si en la parte de barro más oscuro pues, se han ido demasiadas salpicaduras claras y no tiene sentido porque por lógica primero va al seco y sobre el seco que se va secando hacia abajo pues el, el oscuro tiene que venir abajo, no podéis tener seco abajo pero simplemente le volvéis a dar con los tonos de, de, del, del húmedo y ya está so, basically, what I'll show here is, I've got some plaques and it just shows, just quickly, we 
we've started off with the bare plastic. I've done this over the green, but normally it would just be bare plastic with the putty. Then it's painted with the hairspray effect. Then we block in the colours. It's a bit of a resume of what he's done. He's base, he applies the putty, then he does la, la aerografiado, perdón, primero eh, da con el, o con la laca o con el chipping effect, ¿vale? Luego pinta con el color más claro, de barro seco, y luego pasa al color oscuro. And then the final effect with the, the stippling, and I haven't put the gloss varnish on that yet, but I think that shows what it is. Y el último es, eh, a excepción del, del barniz brillante, pues el último sería un poco la integración de, de todas esas... What, what I want to do, do you want to, would you like to have a look at that? It's a classic one, everybody can have a look. While I clean my brushes and start for the next bit. As that's going round, what I want to show now is how I recreate the dust effects on an actual top of the vehicle. Ahora va a hacerlo en superficies planas, okay. no verticales, ¿vale? Now this is this is all done with acrylic paint. De momento todo acrílico. No, I don't use pigments for this stage. I have, again, it's all down to how you can control things and put the effects where you want to put the effects, not have it too random that, oh, hang on, that just doesn't look natural. Evitar los pigmentos, como veis, él no considera que los pigmentos te, te restan mucho control. So Entonces, por ahora, todo acrílico, ¿vale? Lo que ha hecho hasta ahora ahí es con acrílicos. Okay, so I'll start with a, a turret I've just prepared. It's just been normal, um, real color, just painted. Normally, it would have been finished completely. All the, chap all the chipping, scratches, everything would have been done before I start this stage. Even sometimes I leave some of the storage on because everything on a vehicle gets dusty. You know, it doesn't like, when you drive it, when the vehicle gets driven through dust, it doesn't just pick up on some areas, it covers all of the vehicle, including the, to the tools, the equipment, the machine guns, everything. But some, sometimes people forget that. I've seen a lot of models where people have actually um, stuck the tools on after they've done the weathering so the tools have no dust or anything. In this case, you can see that it's only a pintura capa base, tritono, sin eh, color. Pero lo que va a hacer ahora es lo hace cuando ya tiene todo. Ha hecho los desconchados, ha aplicado distintas técnicas de, de weathering. Lo que también suele hacer es Intenta en ese momento cuando va a hacer el empolvado ya poner cajas, herramientas, eh, todo tipo de accesorios que vaya a tener el carro porque lo que comentaba es que algunas veces lo dejamos maravillosamente empolvado pero luego le empiezas a añadir eh, una caja y no está tan empolvada y se supone que todo lo que hay sobre el carro tiene que tener un nivel más o menos equiparable de, 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 de polvo y de, y de barro. Entonces él es partidario de Ya cuando tiene todo preparado, él pone los picos, las palas, las cajas, las box, todo lo que vaya a poner, mantas, etc. Y entonces empieza lo que va a hacer ahora, ¿vale? Okay. What we're going to start with now is what the first thing is to do, prepare the surface for the wet, for the dust. So we have normal water, just water, and um, washing up liquid. Está usando agua y fire. Put the drops, put the drops in the water, and that's just really to break up the surface tension. Everybody thinks they know what there is there. Por una cuestión de la tensión de la superficial tension, yes. surface, surface, surface tension, yeah. So what we're going to do now is we, we'll work on one panel at the time. Or we'll do we'll do these two panels here. So with your wet brush, just basically moisture the area you're going to work. On. Water and water and fairy washing up liquid. Now, because we're working in acrylics, the trick, because it dries quickly, especially in this heat, 
the trick is not to work on too big an area. Don't do the whole turret. Just pick a panel where you can have a separation line. And what you can do is, what, like what I've done here, I've built individual panels up as I've gone. So we've got that covered there with our, our soapy water mix. La clave es no trabajar en grandes superficies porque os va a secar muy rápido, ¿vale? Entonces es definir un área limitada y, y hacer esto que acaba de hacer, que es una mezcla de agua fiery y ahora ya va con el aquel. Take our medium grey with views prior for the actual effects you've seen on the side skirts. And what we want to start off with first is almost like a wash. Very, very important XF21 flat base. Has everybody used that before? Está usando tamilla flat base X21. Yeah, yeah, 21. And that's, we put this, we add this to the mud mix, to the dust mix, basically so we know it lowers dry mass. The last thing you want is any kind of um, glossy areas in, in, in your dust. Mm -hmm. Just, Lo que consigues añadiendo esta pintura de tamilla es que se queda mal. Es un ultra mal. No, nunca te va a salir un brillo, una zona que el, el, el polvo tiene que ser mate. What we start off with is almost like a wash. It's not. See the consistency of that there. First of all, we just we just wanting a wash to actually um, bleach the base of the paintwork. Did you see that? There? Se trata de conseguir la consistencia que se está mostrando. ¿vale? So. We'll just apply that. Now if you notice, what you need to do is keep that, the wash, in the panel that you've actually started to work on. Because you don't, you try not to let it creep over the other sides of the panel. Definir bien la zona que vais a trabajar y no os no salgáis, no, no tengáis la tentación de empezar a trabajar en otro lado. Then what we do is we get dry old brush off. And I always find it's best to have quite small old brushes. We have a brush that's past its best, don't throw it out, just cut it so you have this almost like um, a stippling brush, a very small stippling brush. Coger pinceles que tengan ya un uso, no los descartéis nunca, los planos, ¿vale? Y cuando estén un poquito abiertos, pues ese es el pincel que recomienda para hacer lo que va a hacer ahora. Just take a little bit of moisten your brush, and then where the dust is, what you try to do is push it to the edges of the panel. Entonces lo va empujando hacia los cercos, hacia los lados, ¿vale? Que definen la zona que habéis marcado para trabajar. Remember to keep, because you, you're taking paint off, remember to keep wiping it on a paper towel. And what you do is you, you're pushing it to an edge. Después de darle un poquito, se cae siempre en, la, en el papel. Because I know dust settles everywhere, but for an artistic effect, if it pushes into the edges, you can, you've got somewhere to work from to actually start to bring the rest of the effects into play. Ahora el hecho de él entiende que el polvo está en todos lados, pero para crear maquetas artísticas, visuales, atractivas, lo interesante es un trabajo hacia los lados. Hacia los lados ¿vale? Can everybody see how that wash there? It, it's actually starting to bleach the panel a little bit. You can see how it sort of made that panel slightly lighter than everybody, all the rest of them around it. Veis que hay una concentración de polvo más fuerte en los extremos, en los lados del panel, y el resto lo que ha hecho es generar como una degradación de, de, del color base. Then with our smaller brush, we go back to our paint that we've not we've not diluted. There's no water in this. This is just direct from the from the dropper. Pues ahora va a pasar a una parte que la que no ha diluido en nada. Esta es la pintura de, del bote. And then we start. Seca. We're almost stippling. What you're doing is you're stippling into the corners. Where, where you would think mud would naturally build up. Dry your brush off. 
So it's still just a little bit moist with water. And then you go back and blend it. Coge la pintura sin diluir, seca un poco en, la, en el papel y se centra en las esquinas. What you're actually doing is you're actually lifting the paint back off or you're moving it into the corners where you want it to be. Están consiguiendo acumular todavía más pintura en las esquinas y los lados. Can you see how the effects are starting to... Clean it off and then just... Stick it back through. We did another brush, a slightly bigger brush. Con un pincel un pelín más grande ahora. No tail was wobbling yet tonight. So you can see we, we're starting to get the basics of where the dust is laying down onto. Always good with a hairdryer just to dry it off each time. Because once you once you dry it, you can see how it actually dissipates a little bit. It almost sinks back. So then you can go back again. And you just, what you're actually doing is you're just going back and forwards, applying it and then taking it off. now where you build the actual start of your dust effects you can just stipple a bit more of a heavy heavy application in there just with a flat headed brush almost like a little bit of a chisel brush and just carefully building up your textures Where they have this weld line, you would actually collect more in the, along the weld line. So that ahora como fijando zonas de mayor concentración de polvo. Entonces, por ejemplo, en una línea de soldadura se supone que se va a concentrar más el polvo. Entonces ahí insiste más. If you find that it's you know, then you can add a little bit more of the effect into the middle of the panel. Again, with your with your normal flat brushes, just blend it out. Okay, so I've got a corto in the center of the panel, and then 
vuelve a, vuelve a repetirlo y difundir. Always keep grinding off, and then you can see where you're actually going through. Quite a long process of pressure out going back and forwards between each effect. But again, this is this gives you the opportunity to add as much or as little as you want. If you wanted to be thought right. Es un proceso largo, vas mucho para adelante, para atrás, hasta que llegas al punto óptimo o que te convence, pero bueno, tienes mucho control y tiene unos resultados que merecen la pena. And then if you think oh I want to blend it out a bit more, you can take your brush and just stroke it down the panel. And that brush is just dry, right? It's got it's just moistened, it's not it's not soaking wet, it's moistened with with water. And just stroke it down. Si veis que hay como un escalón entre una zona con mucha concentración y otra zona bastante más diluida, podéis hacer una especie de difuminado con un pincel, mojáis un poquito en agua y le, le pasáis. Vale. Then you just go again with a smaller brush, you just go back, keep moving that side, and just stipple it back out. And the, the harder you rub it, the more you can bring back the base colour. But you have to be careful you don't rub through. Si les, le dais mucho, al final acabáis viendo el color base. Hay que tener cuidado para que no se quede totalmente limpio. So it looks a little bit strange because it's only one isolated panel. But if you see on this example here, once you do one panel and you go to the next panel, you can see how it all starts to come together. And if you want to, you can add almost like some nice runs of dust. <laughs> and it's almost where you have this effect of where the, the dust has got a bit of moisture in, it started just to, to track down. And you continually go back and it's just stippling in the corners. Build it up where it's coming up the panel a little bit. More heavy, heavy lines along here. Está creando zonas más densas con mayor acumulación. With a flat brush, just diffuse the lines. Con ese otro pincel plano, lo que está haciendo es difuminar. So wherever you, wherever you add, you actually stipple back out so it's not so prominent and it doesn't look stark. I mean, it, this is just very, very quick. Um, as you can see, once you build that, you do the panel next to it, you can build more and more effects into it as, as you actually go. I think it's just, it's, Unfortunately, with any demonstration, it's a time fine, time factor where you're trying to show something you might spend two or three hours on and condense it down into quite a short space of time. What I will just show you quickly um, is once you have you've done your dust effects, 
what you want to do now is you want to give some impression of where you've had some wet effects where it's actually gathered up around um, areas where moisture would gather underneath the turret or um, where the crew spilt some uh, fuel, fuel in there. And what I use for that is Es imposible pues, en el poco tiempo que hay, esto lleva tres horas, entonces eh, la clave es conseguir tener distintas concentraciones de polvo pero que ninguna luzca demasiado prominente, demasiado exagerado y conseguir que esté bien integrado, ¿vale? que, tenga, que la capa base no, no se vea, pues, nada se vea como que no ha pasado el tiempo ni el, ni el, ni el desgaste por ahí. ¿vale? Entonces ahora lo que va a hacer finalmente es, después de una vez consigues esto, pues eh, efectos con, como humedecidos por donde transita la, la tripulación o pequeños efectos de, de digamos, un poco más de, de uso reciente, etc. ¿Vale? So, for this effect I use an AK track wash, which again, it's an animal product. Se está usando un esmalte, que es el track wash. We apply it to areas where, where moisture would trap. You can be quite, you can be quite um, aggressive with this, and you can basically just into these areas. Se va a humedecer las las áreas que considera oportuno. Where the moisture would collect along from the panel line or a recess. Cualquier línea de panel o, o zona hendida pues es una zona prolija para aplicar esta. And then, este producto, just by stippling, just blend it away. Y ahora se trata de, de fundir. A little bit thinner on the brush, not too much. Para un poquito en el thinner, igual que espíritu, pero que uséis para diluir el esmalte y retirándolo y consiguiendo un acabado que no está como fundido. The enormous brush it in one that as if it's as if it's followed gravity, you know, as if it's moving away, so you actually have this as it's Teniendo siempre en cuenta el efecto de la gravedad, si es un, un, un pelín inclinado, pues siempre retirando. And then, then with a little, again, another flattish brush, and just go back and just stick on the edges off. Pues con un pincel plano, de los ya trilladillos, ya, ya usados, pues los laterales que va dando. And so that just blends it in. Yeah, like is it, the, the track wash is just that right kind of colour for that sort of um, damp dust with a bit of you know grimy kind of look to it. And I'll just show you quickly if I, if I do it on the top of that turret. Polvo húmedo, el polvo sucio. Creo que este, en concreto este color es muy útil para simular ese esa apariencia. And again, you know, we talked earlier about the, the almost like the tide mark where the dust absorbs any moisture. Um, you want to try and keep that as opposed to getting rid of it. As dust, as moisture dries and the dust, it actually leaves a mark where it's actually dust, where it's actually gone. So you can try and the thinner. Veréis 
que a veces queda una línea muy marcada, pero es, es una línea que, que queda así, la parte entre que diferencia el, el polvo humedecido y sucio del, del que es un poco más seco. got that effect where you almost have like a damp area, just like just just got that little bit of moisture to it. Mm -hmm. Así que eso sería el ejemplo de cómo queda el polvo humedecido. Anybody got any? Think of another time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anybody got any questions? Yeah. Yeah. What, what I'd like to do is if you've seen a couple of photos of different maquetas that he's done. If you want to bear with me, everybody's all right. Uh, what I'll show you is uh, a photo of the uh, Yeah, it's all Yeah, you see here, the 
with